Good afternoon.
No. When when is your move to Texas? Fifteenth August. Not me, Linga. Ling, do you hear me? Yeah. I I I I said when is you move to uh, Texas? Yeah, month fifteenth, August fifteenth. Oh. Nice. Yeah. I start packing. Yes, almost not yet started. <laughs> That's so much work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so much work. Uh, we leave some something, some like used uh, one. Leave. We will leave something and we will carry something. Mm -hmm. Little, little. Not everything. Yeah. We have to trash yeah. something. Hello. Hi. 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 Sorry, guys. Everyone here? Yeah. Okay, I have a quick task for you guys because I'm going to have to come back. I'm trying to do with something here. Why? Alex is going to be the professor today. Okay, so let me show you guys what I want you to work on for the next few minutes. And then I'll come back. Uh, um, so here it is. All right. So in chapter chapter 10, chapter 10 is very much like chapter 9. It, it, a lot of security um, information there. So I want you to look at this task here, right? There are 15 uh, items here, right? So the question is, here's the question. How many of these 15 tasks can you do? All right. Kaush, you see that? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I want you guys to, Ling, you see that? Yes. I want you to look at all these 15 tasks, right? And write down how many of it you can actually do. Okay? So it's in your book. I'll be back to you in a few minutes. So write it down, and then we're going to discuss it when I get back. Okay? Okay. There are 15 tasks. Just use your book. You see everything right there. Actually, I can also do this for you so you can see everything. Uh, somebody's having a conversation. Anjuman. All right. Don't worry. I have silenced, I have silenced her. <laughs> <laughs> so, so work on this task, right? Fifteen of it, and see how many you. Can. I'm not saying do anything. You don't have to do anything. Just look at which ones you can do and you're familiar with. Okay, Kaush. Yes. Sir. I can understand. Why is Kaush saying no, 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 no? <laughs> yes, I can understand that. Sorry. Okay. So I'll be right back. I'll be right back to you guys. Okay. 
Alex, you got it? Yeah. Sorry, I I have a late, I late. No problem. <laughs> and your mom. Yeah. If you have a question, just ask Alex. Because Alex is a host in the right now. I can. Um, Lim? Hello. I, hello? Are you hearing me? Yeah. Uh, what about question? You can ask uh -huh. Alex. If you have a question, you can ask Alex. Mm, you know what to do. The, you have to um, take the book and go to the chapter 10. I think page number 529. Oh, oh, oh sorry. I, I, Alex, where is Alex? Uh, sorry, I did not uh, get what you asked. Yeah, whatever. It is a lab. That, that's the one he asked, right? The chapter 10 lab thing? Uh-huh, yes. This is 529 page. In uh, chapter 10, uh, how, 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 page number? 529, 529. Oh, um, 529. Okay. And uh, um, 529. <coughs> Uh, chapter 10 lab, uh, there are uh, 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 15 questions here. Yeah, uh, check one by one and if you are, cannot do some, any, uh, the not, uh, you cannot do and you are not familiar with that, write down it and you can ask from the professor, uh, oh. from the manager. That, but, uh, okay. Yeah. Chapter 10, Cobalt Working in the Security. Mm. What is on FC? <laughs> uh, I can find the answer in Appendix A. Appendix A, um, last page. Oh, where is Appendix A? Mm -hmm. Um, there uh, you can find the answer in Appendix A. Okay. He's able, um... Um, uh, what is appendix A? I do uh, not uh, Anjuman, there's no any answers for that. This question, so you have to, uh, if you are no by yourself, you can, uh, if you are not know about that, you can ask, mark it and ask from the professor. And oh, yes, that's what he asked. Alex said, let me explain. <laughs> I don't know my English. Ask you should be able to do well is as follows: well disable Bluetooth and NFC. Mm -hmm. 
डिजेबल अनयूज्ड सर्विस डिजेबल ऑटो प्ले सेटअप स्किन सेवर पासवर्ड इन इंगेजेड इनेबल फाइल इंक्रिप्शन इनस्टॉल एंड कोफिगर एंटी मैनुअल डिजेबल और इनेबल द गेस्ट यूजर अकाउंट क्रिएट कॉम्प्लेक्स पासवर्ड दैट आर इजी फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर डेट हर फाइंड ऑनलाइन एंड एक्सेप्टेबल यूज पॉलिसी फॉर योर कंपनी अपडेट योर वेब ब्राउज़र टू द लेटेस्ट वर्जन कॉन्फ़िगर ऑटो फिन कॉन्फ़िगर ब्राउज़र सिक्योरिटी मैनेज एंड डिलीट ब्राउज़र हिस्ट्री एंड कॉपीज रिकॉग्नाइज सिक्योर ऑप्शन रिसर्च Alex here. Alex. Yes, Sanjuman. Yes. Uh, number five. Uh, enable file uh, encryption. In, uh, you can es explain this. Actually, if you don't know what it is about, you just say that you don't are not able to do this. So uh, you don't have to mind uh, explaining anything. Just see what you know uh, how to do and mark uh, what you are able or not to do for now. Yes. Enable file encryption. It need more time. Uh, we read one by one and uh, try to understand.
All right. Let's start with Lynn. Huh? Lynn, let's start with you. So let's see what you got. Number eight. We're trying to look at the list to see. Num number eight. Um, so let's go. So let's start with one. Okay, oh, tell me which ones you can't do. How about the ones you can't do? Yeah, number eight. What? Eight. I can do eight. Great. <clears throat> yeah. No, no, that's what you can. How about what you cannot? Oh, cannot. Mm -hmm. Yes, cannot. Uh, oh, you mean number eight is the only one you can do here? You, you want to do what? So I took number eight. <laughs> that's what that's, I mean. <laughs> okay, so you can do eight. What else can you do? Uh, number one. Uh, I don't oh, know how to do number okay. two. You don't know how to do number two. Uh -huh, okay, number do. number three. Number three, yes. Number Let me... Increase the font. Okay. Okay, what of number four? Number four and six and mm. I don't know how to. You know what? You don't know what a screensaver is. Uh -huh. I know what a screensaver was. <laughs> was oh, right. Like, like when, yeah. I, when I need to use the computer, I should turn in the password, right? Yeah, I don't think I don't think I'm not sure. Well, let's look at it. So screensavers. Uh, where are the screen savers now? Yeah, screen savers look like that. You know, when you're not using your computer, you see all these things <laughs> happening on your screen, right? Mm. Something like that. On your computer screen. When you're not using a computer, sometimes you see all this stuff happening. Like little things going across your screen. No? Okay. I think um, screen savers were uh, needed for uh, VGA screens, but uh, nowadays they are not needed, or um, I don't see anybody using that anymore. Well, screen savers uh, still have a place, I think. Let me see if I do a search here on my computer. Let's see if you have screen saver. Screensaver, look at that. Screensaver, so. All right. So let me see if you guys can see my screensaver. Oh, uh, where is it? What is this? You can disable it if you want, but um, you still, it's still, okay, so see right here. Are you able to see it? Yes. Windows 10. Yes. Mm -hmm. Windows 10. Okay. Uh, or bubbles. You see the bubbles? Yes. Yes. Many Isn't this nice? Yeah. Yeah. You see a lot of bubbles, right? Lots of bubbles. Yes. Should we should we just keep it this way? <laughs> Why is Lynn Lynn is frozen? No, I'm here. You're frozen, like you know, you're not moving. Your face is stuck there. So those are screensavers. Let's keep going. 
Um, okay, you're moving now. What of, um, okay, so let's just go around the class. Let's start from the top here. Question one, right? Who is able to do question one? Or the, you know, the first task? Anybody? Yes. All right, so you can disable Bluetooth on your computer or your phone, right? Yes. So if you go to Bluetooth settings, most of these things, if you go to settings, um, you can, right here, you can, you see, you see right here, it says you can turn on, right here, turn on Bluetooth, or you can turn it off, okay? So you have the options to do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else do we have? Disable unused services. If you're not using a service, a lot of things you can just say, just like that uh, screensaver, right? Oh, uh, where is it? Like the screensaver, if I click on it here, I can just say none. That is, I don't want any screensaver. And then I apply. Okay. So same thing with the with the screensaver password. Um, if you have a screensaver, what's the what's the benefit of the screensaver? Why do we need a screensaver anyway? Why do we need a screensaver, May? Why do you think we need a screensaver? Like people cannot see what happened, what you're doing in your screen. Exactly. For security reasons, when you're not using your computer for like maybe one minute or two minutes, then you have a screensaver so that what's on your screen, as for example, I work with, um, I work with doctors, right, and nurses, and sometimes the doctor is seeing the patient and they have to leave the room quickly for a, for a few minutes, right, or for a few seconds. If the doctor has no screensaver, then the patient can see everything on the screen, or anybody coming into the room can see whatever is on the screen. Okay? So a screensaver is going to protect what's on the screen, you know, and then when you come back, you can either use a password to get back in or just move your mouse and you get back in there. All right, so it's good for security. Okay, uh, enable file encryption. So let's see this one here. How do you enable file encryption? So let's say I go to my files here. Let's say I have a file. Let's go to my junk folder here. See, I have a folder here. Can I find a folder? Let me create a folder here. Let's say test. I'll call it test encryption. Now, when you right click on that folder, okay, when you right click on that folder, I think we go to properties and we might have the option here of security. Actually, I'm not sure this is the encryption. Let me, let's just be sure. Let's go in here and see what the book says about encryption. Encryption. All right. I read. All right, so let's see here what it says about file encryption. Okay. All right, so look at this here. File encryption in Windows 
is considered an attribute of the file system, right? Is considered an attribute of the file system. Now you guys might remember that we have kind of looked at this before. Uh, when you look at your system, your C drive, this PC, the C drive, look at the properties. It tells you that your system is NTFS, right? So what it's telling us is uh, this NTFS system, right? Your file system, it has encryption automatically, right? NTF is required to use encryption. Um, so file encryption in Windows is considered an attribute of the file system. NTFS is required to use file to use encryption. Now there are Windows, uh, let's see, Windows 10 Professional, Windows 8. All right, it looks like not in every situation you have encryption. I mean, you, you remember what encryption is, right? Encryption is when your data is protected, right? When your data is protected, basically. So let's see how, okay, give us an idea of how to do it here, right here. Give us an idea of how to do it. So on your computer, why don't we try that right now? So it says, um, if you don't already have at least two user accounts on your PC, create one. All right, so look at that. Actually, it was what I was doing before. Okay, so let's do it again. I was working on that already. So it says, um, on the security tab, click edit. Okay, so right click here, go to properties, go to security tab and click edit. Okay, do you guys see that? Yes. Did you see that or did I go too fast? Yes. Let's look at uh, it again. Yeah. It says right click on the folder, right click on the folder and go to properties. On the security tab, click edit. The permissions for, for the dialog box opens. All right, so let's go back there. All right, so if I click add, right here, I have, to, I have to select a user. I need to have a different user, but if I click add, then it says right here, um, click add, where is it? Click add, the select users or groups dialog box opens up um, in the enter name, step six. All right, so you have to have, okay, you have to have different users or a different user, right? Actually, okay, in the advanced attributes dialog box, okay, right here, one second, cancel this. Cancel. If I go to advanced, uh, not here. If I go here, I go to advanced. All right. You need to. It's it's it's. There's some more steps that we need to take. Uh, you need to have an extra user there so you can kind of go into these permissions. All right, so it's quite a process. I don't think we can do that right now because it involves us having to create a new user. But the answer to the question is you're able to encrypt folders on your system, right? You have the ability to do that. Well, let me see if I ha have something else here. Maybe you'll show me that. Yeah, we need to have an extra user here to be able to do that. So let's just cancel that. You just want to know that you have the ability to do it. 
All right, let's go back to those um, tasks. I can share. So you can enable file encryption, absolutely, right? You just have to have an extra user. There's a few processes there. How about install and configure malware? Has anybody installed um, antivirus? Couch, do you have antivirus on your computer? Yes. Did you yes. install it by yourself? No. Who installed it for you? Uh, my husband. Okay. See, Arch, have you, Arch do you have um, yes. antivirus? Yes. Did you install it by yourself? Yes. Okay. I, is it a very is it a, is it a very difficult difficult no. process to install no. antivirus? No. We can we can search in Google and we can. Which one, which antivirus you want, you can select that. And after selecting, you can pay. And you yeah, can exactly. The steps are, for example, if we go here and say how to install. I mean, literally, you can find how to do anything, right? Um, so how to install antivirus? It tells you right here, right? Depends on what you, what you do. It says if you download that antivirus on the internet, find the downloaded file on your computer. Many times you unzip the file or you just double click and it starts going through the process. Next, 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 next. That's it. So, Kaush, the next time you want to update your antivirus, tell your husband, let me try it this time. Yeah. Maybe I can do it by myself. Yeah. <laughs> Professor said I should try it myself. So, <laughs> step aside. Let me do it myself. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you just have to follow the different steps until you get to the end, and you might have to restart your computer when you're done just to get the whole thing set up. Okay. Um, disable or enable the guest user account. Well, again, you have to have, um, well, you know, the guest account might be like, if it's part of your, part of your wireless setup, right? I remember that I showed us, um, I think I showed you, there was a link that we went to, if I can find that link. Uh, we walked on a kind of a, a, a router test site, right? So let me see if I can find it. Do you guys remember when we walked on that? We looked at the guest account, how to set permissions and all that on the, uh, like a, a test site. Actually, let me go here and see if I can find it. Go to my UMass Boston uh page oh oh is it i think i had it yeah right here okay do you guys remember this when we looked at this um the guest network here to look at how to set up, you know, like basic setup of a wireless access point. Anjuman, do you remember this? Everybody's so silent today. Is it uh, Monday? Um, yes. yes. You guys, you guys don't remember when we looked at all this setup here? Yes. You discuss this our classes. Yeah, we discussed this, right? We looked at all the different options here, yes. right? The WPA and all that kind of stuff. So the question is, he's asking us about the, the guest user account, right? If you have a, if you, 
Well, usually that may not be up to you to do it, right? But right here, you see where it says enable or disable, right? You just check. Many times you just have to check the box or uncheck the box. So right here, we don't want to we, we don't want to enable the guest account. So we just leave this unchecked, okay? So if you have the device like that by yourself, um, you know, you might you might work in a job where they ask you to do stuff like that. It's not very complicated. Just go in there, look at the options you have, and you enable or disable. And in fact, when you work on a job, usually they're going to train you before you start doing stuff like that. So even if you're not familiar with it, uh, you'll be trained. And some things need practice, 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 right? All right. How about this one, number eight? So we're going to try this right now. Everyone is going to create a complex password but that is easy to remember. Yes. Right? So create a complex password that is easy to remember and put it in the chat. Let's look at what everybody has. Here are some rules, right? When you're creating a password, uh, it has to be like a phrase, like uh, a phrase or, um, yeah, like a phrase, um, numbers, and letters, special, Characters. Special characters, characters, um, and usually it should be between eight characters, eight, eight. to twelve. Twelve, eight to twelve. Yeah, between eight to twelve. So, mm -hmm. like a phrase. What's a phrase? A phrase can be something like um, Boston Red Sox, and you make that somehow into a password. Or you say, I uh, like pizza, right? Hmm. Uh, you say, um, let me see. What's the phrase? My older child. Those are phrases. All right, so create a phrase um, that you're going to use for your password, and you have to mix up, you know, change some of the characters to make your complex password. All right, so let's see what you guys have. Let me look in the chat. When you do it, put it in the chat, and then we're going to examine everyone's, everyone's password and see uh, who wins this exercise. Create a, a complex password between 8 and 12 characters, like a phrase that you can remember, but you have to substitute, right? Check out some characters, use numbers and letters and special characters, okay? So who has it? Put it in the chat. Let's see. All right, so... All right, here's number one here. So what is this phrase? Uh, only me, uh, this, uh, uh, I am the only one uh, who uh, got an idea. I want to hear from uh, someone else before saying what my okay. uh, password is about. Okay, I see. All right, who else has? Is somebody on the train? Okay, let's see this here. All kinds of interesting... Uh, 
Oh, that's interesting. I kind of like this one. That, that, uh... Okay, can, guess, let's can, he, can anybody guess my password? All right, so let's see. So, okay, Alex, so tell us yours first. Okay, so I uh, my password is Madonna, written backwards with all letter A's, uh, capital, and uh, the number is her uh, date of birth. Madonna's date of birth is eight sixteen. Yep. Like August sixteenth. Correct. Interesting. So I got to remember that. Like, this is this is it's going to be hard, right? I got to remember it. It might be quite a challenge to remember, Alex. You don't think so? Uh, no. If you only put your favorite singer, uh, reading backwards, you just re have to remember that you will have to read it, uh, write her number backward, uh, her name backwards, and remember her. Wow. Who is gonna guess that? Well, yeah, you're right. <laughs> And uh, I just okay. put uh, the, the sign, the special character in the middle. And this is yeah. easy to remember as well. Yeah, I don't think anybody can remember, can know this one. <laughs> Even Madonna herself wouldn't know what it is. <laughs> All right, how about the next one here? This is for who? Uh, me. So what is this? Uh, can you guess anybody? <laughs> Why? Why you default? You had. <laughs> what? Had. You got. You guys had. Correct. Why you had? Why you? Why you, why you, why you all had follow you? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Huh? Why you to follow you? <laughs> right? No, 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 no. Why oh, what you, is it? Uh, I said what you had for lunch. And, oh no, I what, said what? Uh, password um, should not. No, no, no. Should I not. Uh, say it's say phrase. this again. It's a what? sentence. It's, it's a question. Mm -hmm. I am asking you, everyone. What mm -hmm. like uh, so, two letters? Two letters oh. from every word. What you had for? Why do you what? What? <laughs> what? what? Now why? It's what? No, no. Why? Yeah. Why were you? I said uh, instead of why were you, I I took you. Why you? You. What you had for lunch? Wow. <laughs> okay. Some creative. All right. It's it's complex. You just have to remember it, right? Because if you don't remember, you're gonna make so many mistakes. Okay. Um, couch. What is this? He's a Bamati. Is that Obama? <laughs> no. It's related to our class. Then it can be easy. Oh. Related to this class? Yes. Um he's I have no idea what it is. Is any anyone can guess? Okay, who can guess this? He is Obama IT 21. He's something IT 21. I know that uh, part, but what's the, what's the Obama, Obama? What's this part? <laughs> it's you, guys. Our teachers, like, hi, uh, Sam, uh, Banjo, Mac. Oh! IT 21, 2001. So, like. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, that's nice. That's all our names, right? Like the first yes. two characters in our names. Yes. Oh, that's easy to remember and it's complex. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. All right, May. This is your little girl, right? I was running around there. So this is my, my, my one little girl goes to the loo. Is that like the loo? Like the bathroom? No, just, just, just like, I. Uh... Yellow, yellow. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, I want to time 100, but I'm time wrong. Oh. Yeah, my. Oh, I one, thought that was like. 100. I thought you were writing like 
Like the loo. The loo is like the bathroom. No. <laughs> like your little girl goes to the loo a lot. <laughs> I thought that okay, was uh, her name. Oh, is her name Lou? No. <laughs> okay, uh, my one little girl. Oh, so this is supposed to be 100? Yeah, actually, I, I just like, yeah, try 100. <clears throat> wrong, so. Okay, well, I mean, it's good because it's quite long. Mm -hmm. Just have to remember where everything is at, like the numbers and stuff. Yeah. Okay, um, let's see. And Juman, so this is love, my God. Well, you should have no spaces, right? No spaces in your, when you create a password, right? Okay, so we know this part here. What is two? Th what's this? Two twenty. What's this number for? And Juman, you're you're muted. This uh, number is my daughter uh, birth year and twenty nine hour marriage day. Her birth year. Bad day, bad year, my daughter, 2008. Oh, oh, 2008. Oh, 2008, February 9th? And uh, no, and 29 is our marriage day, 29. Is Mother's Day? Mother's no, marriage day. Uh, oh, you got wedding, married. Wedding day. Yes, wedding day. Marrying, married. Wedding day. They are when they are married. I thought you said your daughter's birthday. Uh, no, my daughter's birth year yeah. and, and my marriage day. I it I make it difficult, not but so complex. Okay, your okay, your your daughter's birth year and twenty nine is what? Uh, um, the say, day yeah, that she got married. married. Yeah. <laughs> twenty nine. Twenty nine. 29 what? Is that like a day? 29th of what? What month? Uh, it's December. She didn't give that information. December. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, as long as you remember everything you did, right? Because, <laughs> you know, it works. I mean, all the passwords are great. Um, a bit tough for me to remember, but as long as you remember it, okay? Okay, very good. All right, let's see what else we got here. Number nine, draft or find online an acceptable use policy for your company. So, Arch, what is a, what's a policy? Means uh, some rules. Some, <laughs> some rules. What kind of rules? I don't know. What kind of rules? Maybe admin can use something. Admin can, can you raise something. your volume a little bit, Arch? Uh, yeah. Can you hear? Yeah, just raise your volume a little bit or raise your voice a little bit. Okay. Uh, like admin can use some uh, something and other persons can use other area. Is that... Okay, so what you can, what you can do in your office or in your company, and what you can't do, right? Yeah, what yeah. you should and should not do, right? Yeah. Um, so here's an example. If we look at um, some templates we have, so every company has a has policies for different things, right? different things. So for example, you might have a policy for, let's see, let's go to this clean desk policy. A clean desk policy. Now, if you have a clean desk policy, it's an actual document, right? You have to sign it and say, I got it. I read it. I got it. So for example, it says here, this is a template 
a lot of, you can always use this for your company and edit, you know, for what you want to do with it. So right here it says a clean desk policy um, is an important tool. This is a mistake here. An important tool to ensure that all sensitive data are removed from the end user workspace and locked away when the items are not in use or an employee leaves his or her workstation. So when you're at work, let's say you work in customer service, right? And you have patient information, right? If you're going to go for lunch, May, what should you do with all that document? Just leave everything there and go for lunch? No. So this document is saying that we want to maintain a clean desk policy and this is what you should do. This is how to do it or you know what to do. So right here it says the policy, number one, employees are required to ensure that all sensitive information uh, in hard copy electronic is secure in their work area at the end of the day, right? Computer stations must be locked when workspace is unoccupied. Computer workstations must be shut completely down at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. Laptops must either be locked away or put in a drawer or in a cabinet or something, right? Passwords may not be left on sticky notes. You know, you put your password, this long password that you created, and you stick it on your computer monitor. He says you can't do that. So Arch, this is what you mean, right? Rules, do's and don'ts in the office. He says, um, printouts containing restricted or sensitive information should be immediately removed from the printer. So when you print something, don't just leave it there in the printer, go get it. It says, um, upon, upon, when you are disposing documents, they should be shredded in the official shredder bins or locked in confidential. So this is a policy. If you walk in the company, they're going to ask you to read this. Now, um, Lane, what happens if you disobey this policy? Look at what it says there. If you don't comply with the policy, what's going to happen to you? This time. Um, can do that. What? What's termination of employment? What does that mean? Um, termination. You're fired. <laughs> you are fired. Go away. Never you come back here. Go home. Go and stay with your husband. <laughs> no more work for you because you've messed up. Um, so if you if you don't comply with the policy, you may be fired. Usually you're going to get some warnings. They're going to warn you and tell you you can't do that. If you go for lunch, and leave all the information on your desk, you're going to get into trouble with your supervisor. So every company has policies, right? If you work in a restaurant, you work in a grocery store, you work in a bank, you work in a whatever, wherever you work in the school, there are policies for how to behave. Rules, like what Couch said, rules. Okay. How about this? Anu, do you know how to update your browser? Oh. No? I'm sure. I didn't do. I didn't do. We talked about this before, guys. Yes, 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 sure. If you go to your go to your Chrome mm -hmm. or your Firefox, right? Now, what do you do here? You go to your settings here. Uh, actually, you go to help and go to about 
about Google Chrome. Go to about Google Chrome. And once you click on about, it's going to immediately update your browser to the latest. So go to your settings, go to about. And once you click on about, it's going to update to the latest version. Same thing with Firefox. If I go to help and I go to about Firefox, it's going to check for updates and update to the latest version. So you might work in a company and they tell you your job is to make sure that all the, all the computers have updated browsers. All you do is you go into the browser, go to help, oh, okay. go to about, okay. it's going to I check thought, for updates. Um, yep. I thought it is giving information about the browser, but I don't know it is updating. So it oh, is that's what it does. It updates. Oh, okay. That's how you update to the latest version. You're going to help, go to about. Okay. All the browsers do the same thing like that. Let's go to the help section and go to about. It's going to update it. Oh, okay. Okay, what of configure autofill? And Juman, you know what autofill is? If you, let's say you sign into your yes. account. For example, I go to my account here. Yes, I need to go to Google Chrome and uh, then I uh, write here uh, to autofill for autofill and um, my device, Android device or any device. Uh, exactly. Yes. It's going to ask you if you want to save that information. Yes. Okay. So, for example, to log into this account, I have several emails I can use, right? Yes. Once you, once you, it's, it automatically is going to ask you, do you want to save that information? All yes. right. So, if you select that, it's going to save it for you. The problem, the problem with other field is you may never remember your password, right? You don't know what your password is because it's always there. Mm -hmm. So if you go to a different device to log in and then you're thinking, what's my password? But you don't know because you've always done autofill for the last two years. <laughs> right? So now you get in trouble because you don't know what it is. Okay? Um, so I may edit that, and that, may delete something and edit something that... Delete. So that's how to do that, right? Basically, the browser is going to ask you or your phone is going to ask you, do you want to save that information? Just say yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, browser security. A lot of this is actually configured automatically. You don't have to do that manually, right? But just in case you want to know, if you go into your, if you go into, uh, I think you're going to tools. Um, not tools, actually. Where's my settings here? Okay, so I go to my history here, right? If I go to my history and I click on clear recent history, so here's an options for you, right? Um, like question 12 and 13, well, they're not questions, just this task. Uh, configure browser, browser security, manage and delete browser history and cookies. So first of all, what are, what are cookies? I want a cookies. Yep, go ahead. What are cookies? History and cookies. Anybody? I think there are some points. Alex? points. Go ahead, Anu. I think there are some points um, from the sites. 
uh, which you browse yep cookies not the cookies that you buy at um not the cookies that you buy at target cookies will automatically store you uh, frequently using websites data etc exactly um so let's see so yeah so cookies are <clears throat> excuse me cookies are basically information that websites uh, their files right that a website stores on your computer to help you when you come back to that site for example what i just what we just talked about where you want to save information right cookies help you do that to save information about your activity on that website sometimes it's helpful um to do that um well sometimes also it, the, the cookies are not always they're not always helpful right sometimes they can be used for tracking right to track your behavior on the website to track um what pages you go to what you buy right um so it's kind of like it's a it's called a double edged sword what they use to track um your activity and also the negative side or the positive side is it helps you remember the kind of things that you've done so you don't have to you know you don't have to remember it all the time and check every box once you do it the first time and you go there the first time it remembers all your information right but it can also be used to track you and send you advertising and all kinds of you know marketing materials and things like that so that's what that is okay what of um recognize secure websites how do we recognize secure websites alex h with us is is you can search for the lock as well right here are you looking for especially the https all right the https is um and the lock the padlock right a very um a obvious should i say obvious things you look for on the website to help you know if it is secure or not okay well we have a few minutes more so let's try to go to the first question and see if we can do that couch first question is for you can please because of uh, so, go ahead because of a recent string of text in your office you need to harden your local system what two actions are most appropriate for your situation is okay what does it mean by what does this mean first of all couch harden your system yes to make your system more secure right that's what it means to harden to make it hard to break a uh, sort of harden okay so which two options here do you need if um they've been stealing in your office a install the hardware lock install a hardware lock enable encryption enable encryption what of um this install anti malware is need is need install anti malware the question is you've been having 
people steal in your office, right? So how do you prevent people from stealing in your office? Hardware and software, they are it's installing anti-malware because it's virus, maybe kind of, that kind of attack would happen. Well, anti-malware is just on your computer. I can I can steal your computer with the with the malware with the anti malware installed. Yes. So to prevent theft in your office, that's the question. So number A looks okay. What's the other one? Let's see. Question ten. Or oh, chapter ten, question one. So All right, so look at that. So right there, uh, Kaush, you're right. <laughs> yep, it says, uh, if you are trying to prevent theft, people stealing, then you need to have a padlock or a hardware lock. Uh, and then you need to encrypt your data so that if they steal your laptop, right, they can't get into your information. It's useless. So A and D are correct. Priority is like a open priority and sit able. All right, let's see a couple more questions here. Uh, uh, Professor, I have a question. Uh, yeah. We didn't discuss that 15th. Uh, 15th, uh, if you go top, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, that part, 15th, what about the 15th? Research yes. legitimate sources for downloading software. Well, the question is, if you want to download software, where do you go? Do you just go to every website that says download here? No. Yeah, how to, how to know which is secure to down? You tell me. I know you tell us. You tell only, us. How do you only know? that has uh, HTTPS. Uh, nope. Even then, criminals, oh. even criminals use HTTPS. And then how to recognize? And which has? So who can answer the? Who can answer the question? How do we know? You know, good places to download software. Go into a, a physical. Website, right? Yeah, Lynn, what do we do? How do you I, know if the website is good for downloading stuff? I go, I go into a, a physical website, then download. You go into mm. a physical website? Yeah. Like if I want to download the um, social media, then I go into. Oh, I see what you mean. You're going to the actual website, right? Like, yeah. okay, so I think, yeah, I, yeah, that's right. So the word we're looking for is reputable or verified sources. Right? So you have to look for sources that you have used before, right? So if you have used Facebook, for example, go to Facebook. If you have used um, Apple, go to Apple. If you have used Dell, go to Dell's website, right? Go to places where you are absolutely sure. If you've gone to Amazon, for example, every time I buy my antivirus, I buy it on Amazon's website, right? I always buy it there, always. And all the code, everything is right there. So places that you've been to before that you are sure that's where you want to go. But anything that is new that just pops up on your screen and says, download, you know, click here to download. You don't want to do that. Right, Anu? Yeah. So places that you're sure of that you've been to before, right? Or you can even do a search and say, um, websites to download, let's say download music, for example, right? You want to download music. So you do a Google search and you look at all these options here. 
Uh, you know, before you download, just make sure you read a few different options, right? A few different options, especially if it's a if it sounds like it's a new website or something, right? It's a new website, you know. You go and read about it. You don't get much information. You're going to be suspicious. All right. So use things that you are used to. Maybe somebody who you know told you about it. That's another option, right? But just something popping up on your screen or an advertising, you've got to be sure before you before you download. Make sure you read about it. And always, you know, you can always ask one or two other people, right? We Make sure you because once you download that stuff, um, you know, if it's not good, it can totally mess up your computer. All right. So, I don't know, I answer your question. Yeah. Are you, are you, what about valid certificate uh, from the site? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, it, well, if you can, okay, for example, if I go to this site, right? If you want to do, if you want to check it out yourself, you go to the site, and then you look at the um, options here. Click on the lock, right? And then look at this connection. This uh, look at the connection information, right? You go to more information here, right? Now look at the certificate you're talking about right here. It's from Kaspersky Lab. Click on the certificate. And now you can read some more information here, right? So right here, it tells you uh, the country that this website is hosted at, uh, the US, California, blah, blah, blah. It tells you the organization. It tells you if the certificate is valid, it's valid, right? Uh, it tells that's when it's, you know, it's valid uh, for like a year. Gives you some more information here. Gives you the encryption, right? The website is encrypted. So you can see some of the encryption information here. So, um, so like I said, yep, you can always look at the information in the background to be sure. That's what you mean by the certificate, right? Okay. You go in there and you look at that information to be sure. All right. Okay. And you can always send me an email if you're not sure. And I'll send you my bill of, a, of $250 to answer your question. <laughs> okay. Thank so you. let's go here. No problem. Question two. So Anu, try the question two here. What option can you configure on your workstation to increase security when you leave your desk? Screen saver. Screen saver password. It says to increase security when you leave your desk. So that's what we just talked about, right? That if you leave your desk, what's a good idea? Screen, the screensaver is a good idea because single sign-on, this is not about, this has nothing to do with it, right? This is not multi-factor. This is not file encryption. This is about your computer when you're not at your computer, when you're not at your desk, right? So a screensaver password uh, is a good idea. All right, Arch number three. You have just landed at an airport and have an unexpected six hours layover. You want to use your smartphone to get some work, work done. What should you disable as precautionary device, hardening measures, measure to help prevent potential attacks? Choose two. Or disable 
So on your phone, you're trying to prevent other people from making con communication with your phone, right? Yeah. So Bluetooth, what else? All right, Ark, do you know what NFC is? Mm. On your phone? NFC is right here. NFC is a short range communication. If you have two phones, right? Let's say you want to transfer data from one phone to the other phone. You go into the phone and you, and you switch on NFC. Those two phones can exchange information. They have to be very close together, right? Like a hot They can exchange information huh? between two phones. Like a hot pot, right? Uh, like what? Hot pot. Oh. What is pop top? Um, just one phone uh, can connect to other phone. Yeah, that's what it does. That's what it is. That's what it is. It's called NFC. Um, so if we go here and say... Yeah, so you can see if you go into your phone, you can see an icon there maybe, NFC. If you turn on NFC between two phones or two devices that have it, something like this, something like that, they can, they can exchange information. Uh, before I thought it's a, a hot spot. Oh, no, 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 it's not a hot spot. No, it's not a hot spot. Uh -huh. it's not, it's not, it doesn't give you internet. It just helps those two phones, right, communicate to, you know, like you download from one phone to the other phone, something like that, like your contacts, stuff like that from one phone to the other. I just transfer it. Yeah. yeah, so, so let's see that that's question. That's question three. All right, so right there, you should disable Bluetooth and near field communication. Near field communication, right? Near field communication. All right, let's do one more. Um, Lane, this is for you. Number four. Uh, hey. H Actually, we just asked the question yeah. right now, right? We just talked about it right now. Yes. So it's A. Yeah. Okay. So like I said before, I think I said it on Monday, this chapter, there's a lot of things we've covered already, right? So I'm sure when you do your assignment, everyone should have 100 in this assignment. Like everybody should get 100 because we've done this before. Most of it, you guys are familiar with already. Maybe just a few things. Okay. All right, that's it. Let's do the attendance. And you guys can be ready to go and get your lunch. Gee. Gee. All right, so let me see, know when you see the option. Oh, this is a hard one. <laughs> it is? Instagram. TikTok, YouTube, Snapchat, or Instagram. Instagram. Instagram, wrong. <laughs> YouTube. YouTube, correct. Wow. Oh. 
I knew I knew everybody was gonna say Instagram first and TikTok maybe. <laughs> okay, that's all we got. So what wrap this up on when wrap this up on Wednesday. Say it again. What is the Snapchat? Go on, go on, go on, Google it. <laughs> These are also for, the ch for chatting only. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's all it's all the social media crazy stuff. Okay. Lynn, what is TikTok? TikTok is make a, some interesting small video, like joke. In China, what do you call TikTok in China? Douyin. Douyin. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So that's YouTube. So put that in and you'll be all set. Any questions? Nope. Questions. Oh, wait a minute. We didn't talk about your assignments. We have two minutes. So did anybody get a hundred, you know, hundred percent in the assignment? Nobody had any questions in the assignment? Nope. Link, link on 100? <laughs> no. Oh, Link got 100? No. Really? No. <laughs> let, me co let me confirm. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? Link got almost 100. Actually, everyone did. Wow. Anu had, Anu had 100%. Wow. All you guys did excellent. Everybody did excellent, actually. Everyone did excellent. Uh, Arch, what question did you miss? Arch missed mm -hmm. just one question. Okay. Yeah, you guys are getting better and better and better and better. So, you know, this has to, we have to do this in the CompTIA exam. Right? Yeah. You have to have like 90%, 95%. So after next week, I think after next week, we're going to, for the last uh, two weeks, we're going to review uh, the earlier chapters that we did. So you guys can remember, right? Chapter uh, one to five. I did one question wrong, but I don't understand. What's the question? You can share your screen. Uh, sure. This I don't know. The virus is, uh, it's, it's depend, uh, it's depend, um, program, right? But why should I follow other, um, so I don't understand this question. Uh a virus is computer code that inserts itself into an executable file. That is, an executable file is a file that can run on your computer, right? It can install itself on your computer. Mm -hmm. when, so when you run that file, the virus code executes along with the application's code. So the virus joins itself to when something, like let's say you're trying to download something, right? You have to click install next 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 the virus attaches itself right to that file and when you download that file or you download that program right the virus also downloads and installs on your computer so the virus actually um makes itself a part of your program oh oh okay and the you know, definition in the book is also exactly the same thing. That's what it is. What's the other question you missed? Uh, me? Yeah, you missed two questions, right? What's the other one? The uh, other one is so stupid. <laughs> I it's did, stupid? I think I did the wrong button. Here is the same thing, uh, same answer. <laughs> oh. 
Maybe I okay. Because uh, uh, too fast. You went too fast, right? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. That's all we got. So I'll talk to you guys on Wednesday. Okay. Okay. See you Wednesday. See you Wednesday. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Hey, thank you. Bye -bye. Okay. No problem. <laughs>